Oh, we're going down now because, like I said, Barbara Crown at the Hunt Report has promised me the biggest mule deer that I will probably ever shoot. And, uh, you know, so we, we, need, we need to discuss that a little bit. And she's also said to me that if you apply, and, and she's also speaking to viewers here, if you apply, you're almost guaranteed. And if you're not, if you don't get a permit, you better call Barbara because she tells me that if you apply, you're going to get a permit and a big mule deer. Is that right, Barbara? Well, I can't promise anything. <laughs> Well, I think our conversation was close to that, okay? I took a little liberty there. So tell, tell us about what's going to take place in Kansas. Well, uh, Kansas, you may be aware, is one of the best places to get a huge whitetail or a large mule deer. Uh, in 2007, Kansas produced the top uh, trophies entered into the Boone and Crockett record books. Uh, and last year they produced numerous bucks in the 180 class up to 243 points I think it was um, so this is definitely the state to get some big big white tails and some very nice mule deer uh, and the news here is um, Kansas used to be very difficult uh, to get permits sometimes uh, and they had uh, what was called a, a landowner uh, permit program where they issued permits to landowners and then landowners could turn around and sell them to outfitters or to hunters. And the problem was that some of the landowners that were getting permits had maybe a few acres and um, no deer on their property. And they were selling these permits to hunters and hunters weren't really able to do very much with them. So it was a real buyer beware type of situation. Well, that program has been done away with because it was so abused. And now Kansas has gone to, uh, for non resident hunters anyway, strictly a lottery system. And they've increased the number of permits that they're issuing. So this year, if you apply, your chances of getting a permit are very, very good. Okay, and listeners, you heard you, it. Barbara Crown has told you, if you apply, you're going to get a permit and you're going to get a big mule deer. Now, Barbara, tell me a little bit. Did you also say something to me on the phone about Tule Elk and Grizzly Island? Uh, help me with that. Well, Tule Elk are available only in California. And they were almost almost extirpated during the California gold rush. And the state of California has done a really great job of bringing that species of elk back. Uh, and they have a very successful private lands program, which is really the best way for a non-resident to get a permit. Uh, the drawing for uh, permits for Thule elk are really restricted only to uh, resident hunters. And there's three permits that are made available through an auction uh, type situation and those permits go for mucho mucho bucks uh, we're talking fifty sixty thousand uh, dollars and that is for Grizzly Island which is known to produce uh, just enormous uh, tule elk but there are some other opportunities for non-residents that are not quite as expensive uh, and it's through this private land program uh, there are ranchers who have resident herds or migrating herds of elk on their property and they're encouraged to manage for those elk uh, and they offer hunting on their properties uh, either directly as a landowner or with a, an outfitter that they're working with. Uh, so you can get a much more reasonable hunt and you can get it fully guided with lodging meals the whole nine yards uh, and it's their private land um, management program. Uh, what you have to watch out for is uh, you need to ask some questions when you're looking at one of these Thule elk hunts. And this is this is a hunt, by the way, that I will be featuring in the May issue of the newsletter. Oh, good. So you'll be able to look that up on our website next month. Okay. Um, you need to make sure that your the landowner is truly managing for um, trophy quality. There are some of these landowners that as soon as a bull reaches six points, they're going to let somebody shoot it. And there are other landowners that are really, they're not shooting their full quota. 
uh, that's one question you want to ask. How many hunters do you take and how many permits do you get? Um, and what are what's the average size of the elk that are taken on the property? Uh, the Boone and Crockett uh, minimum is, I believe, 250. Um, so you want to start looking around a 230-point bull uh, and up. Um, so let, let me ask you this, Barbara, now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm waiting for a little overlay to take place here, but in the, in the interim, um, can you tell us uh, wh where do we contact, who do we contact in California now if we're not from California uh, to, to come out here? Now, I understand these permits are for Californians only. Is that correct? The permits that are available through the draw. Okay. But permits that are available through the private lands um, management program are open to non-residents, okay. and that's really the best opportunity for non-residents. Okay, for good. And we have it on the we have it on the screen now. Uh, who to contact? There's a phone number down there, folks. Uh, it, now, and we'll also give you some information. I hope on Kansas, and I think that overlay will come up here momentarily, and we'll know who to contact in Kansas. Because when Barbara Crown promises you something, I have to tell you, there it is right there, Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks, and there's a phone number there to contact them. And I want to hear from the hunters who go up there this year, and I, I know that Barbara's going to hear from them. And let's see some pictures, because I, I think I think with a little bit of luck, you can make uh, Del Brady shaking his boots a little bit, because <laughs> Barbara said so. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. We'll see you next week. My pleasure. Okay. Bye-bye.